Okay. Okay, now we're ready. Now we are ready. Thank you everyone for being here. Oh my God, it's a lot of you uh, interested in getting free. <laughs> um, so we are Nadia and Anna. Um, yeah, both CFs from Slovenia. And we just de decided to do this telecall to go through this amazing book. Uh, Ten Keys to to of Total Freedom. Um, it's like we just read it and it's super empowering and really cool and like we are so grateful that you are choosing that um and, and yeah maybe um we wanted to start with um just explaining or telling you what inspired us to start this book club um because we were at um the cf training in rome last week or last month or <laughs> um um who knows and um and also at this another business um class after that and just looking at the facilitations that people were asking for um it really like so many times it just gets down to one of these 10 keys um so it's um it's uh, um one of the tools that you get to know more in detail at the foundation class not as in detail as in the book um uh and it's really like when you go to this advanced access classes you get these really amazing advanced tools that work that help you just get rid of so much stuff but um but like lately we've been getting to like to a knowledge that even if you just had these 10 keys and the basic tools that you get at the first access bars class that you go to you could actually unlock and change anything in your life. So um, we wanted to go through the book again ourselves. And then we just said it's just going to be more fun and also more change in, if we do it in a big group and if we do it in an international group. So, yeah, and we are also like super excited about what individually all of yeah. you know like what do you know about those 10 keys and like this will be exploration of possibilities uh, together like of all of us so it and it's really what anna said like with these 10 keys you can unlock everything like all the areas from like your life where you are stuck and you can change and change and create everything using these 10 keys. Gary also mentioned that in latest CF training in Rome, and it's really, really like that. When you start using access tools and like, um, yeah, now I'm getting to the place where, where I really perceive that this is so true and so simple at the same time. So yeah, today, tonight actually, we are going to explore the first key, um and we will like explain it but how we use it and like introduce you a little bit because some of you are quite new also new to the access so how does it get any better we are so grateful that you are here and today is here um and my brother and, hello yeah and <laughs> like everyone um and barbara danai hey for, hey to friends <laughs> tamara yay marco <laughs> um so really what can we create together and what, yeah. So how, just technically how this is gonna work. Um, me and Nadia are gonna actually read the book. This is why it's called a book club. Um, so it's not so much of a personal facilitation, but if you do have a question, if you want something explained, or if you like get um, some spark of awareness while we are reading the book, just please share that with us. Um, what is it, like Nadia said, what is it that you know that nobody else knows, not even Gary or Dane, or Dane maybe? Um, so consciousness, it's really not about the two of them or about access consciousness, but it's what like each and every one of us knows and um, um, has the ability to choose uh, and change. So um, we'll be reading the book. So uh, each... With each key, one of us is going to be Gary and one of us is going to be Dane. So uh, Nadia is going to do more talking today and reading. So guess who she's being today? <laughs> so I'll be Dane and I'll be reading the participants' questions. Um, and um, 
so yeah, and then like today, tonight it's a free Zoom. And if you would like to join us for the yes. whole 10 series of this um, book club, I mean, when we will actually go through the whole book and explain more, explore more, the price is only 88 euros. So everyone is really invited to join us to do this together, to create like the, like the energy is already like super, how can I say, exciting and expensive. And, and it's like, Nadia, there's like three coffees per Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's three coffees per Zoom. And so each okay. Tuesday, you don't go for a morning coffee and a lunch coffee. And you can actually join us in the evening to explore one of the tankies. And not just explore, actually change the yeah. way you be, you function in this world and yeah. like change your life. You can change your life totally with using these tankies. And also if you don't have time, like I don't really like to read the books because I like, I prefer listening to audio books and you will also get recordings so you can listen, um, to the whole book and like uh, even receive more explore explanation and everything so yeah just ask yourself what will create more um, and I have just one invitation for everybody because if we want to go through the book we're just gonna have to read it like maybe at times um, not very slowly um, and it doesn't really matter if you don't understand everything because we have to do it in English um it's um about the energy yeah just um can you just like right now this moment lower down your barriers and just um make a demand of yourself to be really present this one hour that you chose to be here and receive the change now not sometime in the future you can actually receive the change while listening to the book even if you don't understand a word we are saying mm -hmm yeah and uh get your body to a place where you you are relaxed you can just listen but like what would it take for you to be really present because like every word in this book is a gold yeah it's like you can really use it and like when you will re-listen to the recordings you will perceive more get more because like every time we can receive even more and like yeah so anna what's the first key let's go should we read all of them or will we keep it a surprise for each time? We will keep it a surprise okay. for each time. <laughs> okay. So you're so. only gonna get, uh, learn the first key today. It's called, would an infinite being truly choose this? It's actually a question you can ask in like every situation. We will explore more about practically and we will also tell you how we are using that tool. So it's a question, you can put it down, like would an infinite being truly choose this? And maybe like we will go through the book or we, maybe we can explain in the beginning. Yes, um, let's, I think it's cool if we share with you first how we uh, understand and use the tool in our own lives. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's um, like that you may know or you may heard that we are not just the bodies, like there is not no, like there is not the end of you. But if you would just close your eyes and like expand energetically to the size of the room you are now currently in, or if you go with your awareness, like and check how people who like you like or um, like who like, if you go and now perceive the energy of people from your life who are now not physically with you, um, you can get the awareness or sense how they be right now. You can check how your kids are right now or how your partner is or your mother or your friend from Australia or from Italy or from, you can just perceive how they be. And this is like the exercise which shows you we will do one exercise while reading the book because it's in somewhere in between something that we will use and lead you through the exercise of expanding your very being infinite being um and it's like this exercise oh, sorry yeah. nadia can i just yeah, of course um like first can you just please acknowledge that everybody here is actually infinite beings and not just you like everybody in bodies is not limited to their bodies but is actually infinite beings mm -hmm. and um yeah so um that's why i'm just explaining a little bit in the beginning 
And like, because in this reality, we have been entrained to function as finite beings. Like, okay, if I want to do this or create this in my business or choose this, I have to go like linear and like choose this, 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 and that. And this question, how I use it helps me a lot. So I am like in the moment when I ask these questions, the point of questions from excess consciousness is not to like to try to figure them out or to imagine or to like actually get an answer, but to receive the awareness. So, and in a second, the question puts you in the energy of what you're asking for. So if I like ask, okay, now I want to create this project and it's like, I feel this uncomfortable feeling. I have this uncomfortable feeling or something. And then I ask, okay, would an infinite being truly choose this? And if I get a sense of lightness, of ease, like that my world expand, I know that is true for me and I go for it. And this question really helps me. And I use it on daily basis. Even if somebody invites me for a coffee, like I go to this question, okay, would an infinite being truly choose this? Because I know I'm infinite being and these questions help me to function, like to be more aware of my infinite choices and like what we are going to explain more during reading this book. So, yeah, I will just... Um, so what you're saying, Nadia, that you're using this tool um, for the creation of your life? Yes, I'm using this tool for That's super cool. Yeah, for creating actually almost everything. I mean everything in my life. I use it as much as I can and I'm actually being this tool. So how does it get any better yeah. than that? How does it get any better? Um, how do you use it, Anna? Yeah, it it was interesting because we were talking like one hour ago about that and um I actually use it um in different situations. Like Nadia was saying that we were entrained to function as finite be finite beings in this reality. Um and um the the difference between an infinite being and finite being is that a finite being functions from thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And this is where I use the tool. When I go into like some sort of weird emotional state or when there is some uh, discomfort in my body, uh, or um, if I'm doing the mind chattering and I like any other tool doesn't work that moment, I would go like, okay. Uh, would an infinite being really choose this? I don't know. Would an infinite being really choose to be sad right now? Uh, would an infinite being really choose to be uh, upset with my husband right now? Uh, or would an infinite being choose to have a headache? Um, and this is where it takes me out of actually functioning from thoughts, feelings, and emotions into um, knowing, perceiving, being, and receiving. Um, so um actually it but you can just start playing with that and see how it works and when it works and you'll you'll see when we go through the book it's not something that you ask once and you're a master of that it's something that you just ask and ask and ask and ask and then um, get the awareness yes and become it and it's really we just want to give you some examples in the beginning because if you don't know access consciousness that much or the tools or how the questions are functioning like how the questions work or something so maybe you just receive some perception and now we can go through the book because it's really brilliant and we can yes. stop and explain more and like um yeah so there's one thing that maybe is cool that we explain in the beginning because okay. I don't know how many people are actually familiar with the access consciousness clearing mm -hmm. statement here. Um, it's going to be used in the book um, quite a lot. So um, the clearing statement in access consciousness is like having this magic wand. When some energy comes up, like when you ask a question and then like everything that is um, not yours, that is a fixed point of view, uh, everything that is um, a limitation will just come up. And then with this brilliant magic wand, you just go like, shk, shk, and you get rid of that energy. You dissolve it and it's called 
Yeah, right and wrong, good and bad, pod and pop, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. And like, if we were now, we will be talking about topics you are trying to avoid or you have some resistance of them or judgment of them. Like if I say the word sex even, like you perceive the barriers up and the energy that comes up from your body and your being. And with this clearing statement, we... Uh, set a question like are you willing to destroy and uncreate everything that is on all levels like energetic uh, and like sub from subconsciousness and from everywhere that is limiting you that you are stuck at some point in your life because you're not willing to receive something there uh, then we just use these words and if you want to know what actually are there for like uh, you can go to uh, www.theclearingstatement.com and check how Dane explains it really well. You can uh, there are subtypes for for a lot of languages, and uh, but you don't have to understand yeah. it. It it will work anyway. You can just play with it and see how it works. And we learn it, it in access bars class, and then we explore more about it in foundation class. Uh, and we are having a foundation in Hawaii in October Yay! together. So you are also invited <laughs> to join us. And yeah, so that it's, we will use a lot clearing statement and like uh, most of you already know it and some of you who don't, if it sounds, if there is something light for you, go check it, use it and see what happens, what shows up. Cool. Cool. Okay. So uh, Gary here on my right will start. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to our, to our first conversation about the 10 keys to total freedom. Tonight we are going to talk about the first key, which is the question, would an infinite being truly choose this? We invite you to ask this question many times a day in response to the situations that came up in your life. It will remind you that you always have a choice because you are an infinite being. Let's start out by Let's start out by talking about what an infinite being is. They. <laughs> <laughs> so most people have no idea what an infinite being is. They don't have the concept even when we talk about it because where do you see it showing up in this reality? You don't see it anywhere. The best you can do is to create a fantasy of what an infinite being would be. But that's not what an infinite being is. So under those conditions, when you don't know what an infinite being actually is, you don't have the choice to be one. The way I personally understand infinite being was by meditation, my meditating to see how far outside my body I could go in all directions. Initially, I thought being an infinite being meant I was outside of my body, but that led to the idea that an infinite being didn't have a body. A lot of people think that an infinite being wouldn't need a body, but that isn't it. You have to get that you, as an infinite being, choose to have a body. You choose to be embodied. Did you get that? We choose to have a body. We choose to get embodied. You have chosen to be embodied since the beginning of time. You choose to have the that the kind of body you have and you choose everything that's going on in your life. An infinite being is one who chooses. You keep thinking an infinite being wouldn't choose this embodiment because you assume that an infinite being would not have a body. That's not correct. You are infinite being and you choose to have a body. Why did you choose to have a body? Well, first of all, there are all kinds of cool things that you can do with a body that you can do without one. Right now, take your right hand Put it on your left arm and touch it lightly. If you didn't have a body, you wouldn't be able to do that. If you didn't have a body, you wouldn't be able to climb into a bathtub and feel hot, <laughs> wonderful water on your skin. And you wouldn't be able to feel the sun on your face. You wouldn't be able to have sex. You wouldn't be able to touch your breasts or your crouch or any of the other things that are fun to do. What would you have to do instead? You would have to stand outside and look at everything. Most people think infinite being is standing outside and looking at things. No, that's not it. Infinite being is being aware of everything and being infinite choice. 
Okay. Um, Nekdo spreš, someone is, sorry, someone is asking about uh, the first key. Um, she says that you cannot hear us well. Can, can you hear us? Okay. So it's, would an infinite being truly choose this? In Slovenian, ali bi neskončno biti res to izbralo? Because the question is in Slovenian. Yeah, the language. question is in Slovenian. Okay. Okay. Um, so, have you a knowledge how cool is that actually we have bodies? We can do all those different things and uh, like we wouldn't be able to do without bodies. Like we can taste the food, the orgasmic food. We can touch our bodies. We can swim. We can travel. We can move our bodies. We can do like... A lot of things that are fun for us. So we chose at some point to have a body. It's yeah. not like, but we automatically perceive that the body is limitation. It's yeah. not. It's an untapped possibility. Yeah. So will you stop treating your body like it is your enemy and actually acknowledge that you chose it and um, that this is super cool? And wake up, yes, and wake up with this sense of gratitude for um, the best tool of creation um, that you will ever have. Yeah, and also like uh, your body can help you uh, to get more awareness. It's actually a tool to receive more awareness because your body's your body has um, its awareness and it's more willing to be aware than you as the being because your body doesn't have a point of view. What is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. It just has has preferences, like what it will prefer at that moment. And it's like, really, when we became more present with our bodies, our life can change. I mean, it's change. So, yeah, let's yeah. explore more. Yes. Okay. Um, so, um, One yeah. So, an infinite being is being aware of everything, being infinite choice, and embracing total embodiment as the joy, the greatness of embodiment that's possible. Okay, and now the clearing. How many definitions of what an infinite being is do you have that are not what it is? Everything that is times a gazillion, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right and wrong, good and bad, bottom and all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. <laughs> What fantasies do you have about what an infinite being is that you've made so real that even in the face of total awareness, you cannot and will not change, choose, or cure them? Everything that is times a gazillion will you destroy and uncreate it all. Right or wrong, good and bad, pod and folk, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. And actually, it's like, I will just interrupt this. We uh, have ordered these books in English. If you would like to have them, you can order this book in Amazon. You don't have to have it. Uh, but if it's like, if it's, you perceive it will work better for you to read while we are reading, is the 10 keys to total freedom. You can order it yourself on Amazon. It will come in one week or in less than one week. And we also have ordered some books. So if you would like to have one, you can uh, just text let us, us know. let us know somewhere on Facebook let or us know. Like wherever. We will probably not have them for all, all of you. you. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. yeah, but if you want, we can actually order a bulk and, and, yeah. um, yeah, we'll so, make it work. Yeah. Somehow. So if like, pl but please text us as soon as possible so we can arrange it as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Okay. So Gary, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Gary, Dane and I have been looking at this area and we realized that the reason reincarnation occurs, the reason you have to come back and do it again and again is because you have, this is really interesting for me, um, the reason you have to come back and do it again and again is because you have the point of view that you never get it right. Wow. You buy into the idea that there is a right and wrong way to be an infinite being then you decide that you always get it wrong. Of course. You didn't get it right based on what? Based on some idea that you bought into. This is the reason we do reincarnation. If you don't want to reincarnate, you have to get that there is a greatness in embodiment, which is the greatness of being totally aware of this reality. Unfortunately, that's the way people live and think. That's what goes on in their mind. I am right. I am wrong. I am right. I am wrong. Therefore, I am right. So therefore, I am wrong. But then I am right. 
but I'm wrong that I'm right. People drive themselves crazy with these insane points of view. Could you just give it all up? And like, can you like just perceive and remember like how often are you head tripping yourself about if right you wrong. if you make a right choice or it, if it was wrong choice or how how like how much are you trying to make the right choice in your life to choose the right partner to choose the right job to choose everything and how much are you judging what is right and what is wrong so how many right and wrong ways of being an infinite being have you made yourself wrong about while trying to be right about while refusing to be right about so you can be wrong about so that you know that you are wrong about right about and right about wrong about so that you are right where you are wrong because you are wrong about right and everything everything that is times a gazillion will you destroy and uncreate it all right and wrong good and bad bottom park online shorts boys and beyonds <laughs> The main thing you have got to get about being an infinite being is that you would not choose judgment. Anywhere you are choosing judgment, you are not functioning from the infinite being. Like, there comes the question, would an infinite being choose this? Would an infinite being choose to judge themselves? So, no. So why are you? <laughs> um, anywhere you are choosing judgment, you are not choosing from infinite being. When you are truly being conscious, you see that everything is in consciousness and oneness. Everything is included, including judgment, and nothing is judged, not even judgment. That's the sign of infinite being. It's not about trying to eliminate judgment. It's simply about being aware when anyone, including you, is doing judgment. Yeah. Just, do you get that? Like, even when you do judgment, like... Just don't judge yourself for do, for doing that. Like in consciousness, everything is included, even judgment. So it's just about, like it says here, being aware where you are doing this and just ask a question. Would an infinite being really choose this? And then you can choose something different or don't. It's neither right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So there was a question from a participant. I ask myself, would an infinite being truly choose this? And I get no. Well, in my logical thinking, opinionated, judgmental universe, this seems to set up a paradox. How does one deal with the answer to this question and embrace or even love the now on a day-to-day -day basis? This is, this is a question from someone who has like attended this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like that the someone, course. some of you would ask that Gary and Dane. So yeah, just to clarify more. You, and Gary replies, you have some reasons or justifications for why you are choosing what you are choosing at every moment of every day. Try asking, would an infinite being truly choose this? So if an infinite being wouldn't choose this, then why the hell am I? Do I really need to choose this? Do I want to choose this? What's the purpose of choosing this? this is the, these are the five questions you can ask. And the question, what's the purpose of choosing this, will take you out of blindly choosing something they not, that may not be from an infinite point of view and move you into an infinite point of view, into the awareness of, wait a minute, there's actually something I'm trying to achieve by choosing this. Once you realize that you can ask, is this choice actually achieving that purpose? You will often find out that it's not. Okay, and question from another participant. If a person doesn't know, perceive or feel that, that they are infinite being, what would be your way to guide that person to have a knowing experience and to perceive that as truth, that that as truth for them? Okay, and Gary. Yeah. yeah. Um, the best way to know that you are infinite being is to close your eyes and feel the outside edges of you. We can all do that. Right yes, now. let's do that. Yeah. It, it, we can do it in half a minute, actually. Yeah. So just close your eyes. If you want. If you want or not, you can do it even with open eyes. And feel the outside edges of you. You are going to find that everywhere you look, there you are, because an infinite being has no limitation. As infinite beings, we have the ability to perceive, know, be, and receive everything. So you can even expand with your presence. You can expand out to the size of the room you are now currently in. 
and just perceive your energy in the room. And lower down all your barriers. Like you don't have to understand this. You don't have to breathe out or breathe in to do this. It's already happening just when I'm talking. And now you just expand to the size of the city you are now currently in. Just energetically go to the size of the city you are now currently in. Connect with everything and everyone. And go even further to the size of the country you are now in. And perceive the expansion of your being and like how your body is relaxing during that. Like you will feel, perceive more lightness in your body. Your body will be like more relaxed. And go even farther to the whole planet, to the whole earth. Just expand out and go even further to the universe, to all the universes. And to the center of the earth. And to, the center, to the center yeah. of the planet. Also to the center of the planet. Be everywhere. And just observe how this is really not hard work. How it's your natural and easy way of being mm -hmm. this space. And go as far as you can. Like go as far as you can with your being. And when you come to that po point, expand even further. Because you're infinite being. And just perceive that expansion because we are entrained to all the time do contraction. We are contracting our beings like to the size of our bodies. Like every time when we perceive like um, anger or a stressful situation, we contract ourselves instead of just expanding out. What can change even with that exercise? Like if you are aware of that and remember yourself to expand more. Okay, so maybe you now get a sense of what, how the being feels like or something. And why it's called infinite. Yeah. Because do you ever actually get to the outer edges of your being? Or can you just <laughs> expand infinitely? Yeah. Infinitely. <laughs> how cool is that? <laughs> cool. Okay. And now there is a question. Uh, there is another question. If an infinite being can be any energy at will and at choice and wants to experience every aspect of their being, what wouldn't they choose? For example, doesn't experience exet, experiencing sadness give you a much deeper awareness of the amazing aspect of being? Even cutting off awareness is a choice. It has some interesting results. This, like this point of view was also my point of view a long time ago. I have this point of view that I have to experience sadness to actually know that when I'm like uh, being happy or experiencing something very joyful, that I appreciate that, that I know how cool is actually that. And I really had that weird, stupid point of view too. <laughs> and so, also like what I just got now, how much are we doing all these emotions, not just sadness, um, just to prove that we are being. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, everywhere we are, where we are proving that we be with like the sadness and all those uh, feelings. Can we destroy and uncreate all of that? Times a good time. Let's do that. Right, wrong, good and bad, pod and pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. And everywhere where you are proving your being with creating the problems, you have like with all the problems you keep in existence just to prove that you be because you don't know how would you feel or what would, who would you be if you will have no problems like how much have you def defined yourself with the problems you have like you are not being you if you don't have money problems or you are not being you if you don't have relationship problems or something okay everything that is times a gazillion can we destroy and uncreate all of that Right, right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Yes, thank and you. And it's like this part is really interesting. So, yeah, be, be present. Be present with Be this present one. and listen now. <laughs> okay. Now, you are coming to a conclusion here. 
The first part of the question, if an infinite being can be any energy at will and at choice and wants to experience every aspect of their being, what wouldn't they, what wouldn't they choose is correct. But the question is, would an infinite being choose this? And if infinite being wouldn't choose it, why are you? That's the way you have got to look at it. Would you really like to experience sadness? Would an infinite being choose sadness? The birds are infinite beings. Do they choose sadness? Do they ever wake up and have a bad feather day? <laughs> I'm not going to sing today because I'm pissed off at the worms. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to look at this from the point of view. Okay, what is it I'm willing to have here? What is it I'm not willing to have here? It's about choices. An infinite being chooses. It requires having a larger perspective than this reality. Does sadness give you a greater awareness of infinite being? Not necessarily. You mentioned the idea of wanting to, of wanting to experience all aspects of self. What's the difference between experiencing that and having the awareness that it's not a choice you would like to make or that you have to make? Thank you very much. We have a weird point of view on this planet that we have to experience something to know it. No, you don't. You can know things without ever experiencing them. Can you please acknowledge that? We can know things without experiencing them. Like how many times in relationships, I don't know what I'm picking that up, but like before you uh, went or create or choose to be in a relationship, you already knew that it's not going to work for you, but you anyway choose to be in it. Like, I don't know, to experience it or something. Like, this is like, like how many times do we actually know and we have this point of view that we have to experience something to prove that we know or something. Like, yeah. okay, everything that is pot yeah. and pot. Pot <laughs> and pot. Even right now, you can perceive the energy of anger. Mm. You can perceive the energy of fear. You can perceive the energy of orgasm. Yeah, you can just but, be aware of it. Yeah, you can just be aware of it. You don't have to experience it or you, you don't have to like act it out right now. Yeah, You don't have to experience things you don't want to, yeah. but you can experience everything you would like to. Yeah, it's a choice. It's a choice. I think like a great point here is like as an infinite being, you have a choice. If you want to do sadness, just go ahead and do sadness, but don't judge yourself. Yeah, don't judge yourself and at least have fun with it yeah. if you choose it. Um, but you can always, like if it's not working for you anymore. Um, Every you, second you have another choice. Sure. You can ask, will this create more or what, what's this creating? And would an infinite being really choose this? And I think that the example with birds always works. Yeah. <laughs> like... Birds never choose sadness or to have a bad feather day. Yeah, like, or competition or any other thing that we're doing here in this reality. Yeah, okay. So, so would an infinite being have to experience something to know, in, to know it and be aware of it? You said even cutting off awareness is a choice. It has some interesting results. It is interesting that we have the point of view that something occurs as a result of the choice to cut off our awareness. Why would an infinite being choose to cut off their awareness so they could appreciate what it's like when they are not cutting off their awareness? Would an infinite being have to cut off awareness in order to appreciate having awareness? I don't think so. So here was another question. What is doubt? Can it be cleared? Is it linked to a kind of validation of awareness or fact? I've entrenched myself in choices that were made because they were the right thing to do. And now I find myself thinking that there is a part of my life where I'd like to make different choices. How can I break through the chains of obligations, societal pressures and mindsets without totally alienating and hurting others? Uh, what about situations where we're in relationships, jobs, or situations that have come about for many years of choices? So basically what they're saying is, so I've made th these choices and now I have doubt whether these were the right choices or not. And now I'm stuck with the results of all these choices. So what do I do? Mm -hmm. Maybe have you find yourself in some 
yeah. think of that. Yeah. So <laughs> Gary said, first of all, doubt is what you use to eliminate awareness and everything you know. Why would you choose that? Ask, would an infinite being truly choose to doubt himself or herself? No. Then why the hell am I? What if I were willing to know everything I know? That's the way it should work. Would an infinite being choose the right thing to do or would an infinite being choose what would create greater awareness? You also have to ask, are obligations, social pressures and mindset something an infinite being would choose or are they something a finite being would choose? And why are you assuming that as an infinite being choosing to break the chains of obligations, social pressures and mindsets, you would alienate and hurt others? Maybe you won't. You don't know because I can guarantee, guarantee you that you haven't actually chosen that. Would an infinite being choose to make their choice permanent for all eternity? That's what you are talking about when you speak about relationships, jobs, or situations that have come about from many years of choices. You are talking about the idea that there is some kind of finite purpose in all of that. Like we if, were uh, yeah. also talking about that before, like we still have this point of view somewhere, maybe we are not even aware of that, that like the choice has to be like forever or like that we are stuck with the choices we made. We are so not willing to have choice every moment of our lives like we are but that's another one of the 10 keys to total freedom yeah <laughs> so we will explore it more next time ex this specific uh, key okay so so dane says if you were to ask yourself the question from the place of whoa would an infinite being have chosen the relationship i chose you can look at it and say okay there are aspects of this relationship that an infinite being would have chosen as an acknowledgement of infinite being. They were a contribution to being. I probably wouldn't have chosen the rest if I had been functioning from infinite being, but what if now I truly could have all of that? You look at it and ask, what would it be like if I had chosen all those things from infinite being? What choices would I have available now? Choosing as an infinite being, for the most part, isn't done in this reality, but it's something that builds. When you make your first choice as an infinite being is, oh, I don't know if I can do this. After about 100 choices, it's, wait a minute, this is something I can actually do. This is something I can actually choose. This is something that's actually available to me. It's not something that's foreign to me. That's why we're having this conversation. So it becomes something that's a reality for you. You don't feel like we're speaking Greek when we talk about functioning from no judgment or functioning from infinite being. If you're not judging what you've chosen, you take judgment out of the computation and it's not part of the equation. That's actually the reason for having this key, to take judgment out of all computations. Hmm. Does that include my stepmother? This is Dane's voice. How does that work? Would an infinite being choose to have my stepmother? That's my question right now. I don't know. The question is, were, were, you, functioning as a, were you functioning as an infinite being when you choose to let your father have your stepmother? Oh, do you mean I could have totally stopped it? Yeah, you could have. I could have been flesh. No way. Not happening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's interesting. But you weren't allowed to have that kind of control or power in your life. And because you weren't allowed to have it, you thought you don't have it. It's a big mistake to think that because you are not allowed to have something that you can't have it. No, no. You can have it all if you are willing to have it. And everywhere that um, you weren't allowed to have that kind of control or power in your life and you stop having it, will you uncreate and destroy it? And uh, uncreate and destroy it times, times a gazillion. Yes. Bad. Right around with the bad pot and pop online shorts by Samuels. We are already fried. Yeah, I'm fried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like the book is really intense. And cool. we're reading it for the second time today. So. Yeah. So <laughs> brains gone. No more brains. <laughs> so here's another question. I think of an infinite being as formless and expanded. There is no need of food 
work or anything this world can offer. Um, so it's kind of like this spiritual being, you know, that doesn't need anything. Um, so for me, when I ask this question in different situations, the answer is always no. If I were an infinite being, I would not need to make that choice. I'm following the feeling of what it would be like to be an infinite being. There would be no more doing, and of course, the body would not be necessary anymore. I'm a massage therapist and I find it increasingly difficult to motivate my body to do this physical work. I often feel a dislike of moving the body and doing body work or training. Once again, it's a fantasy that an infinite being doesn't have any of the things that you have chosen. You are judging that every choice you have made is a wrongness in some way. Everything you have done to make all your choices a wrongness will you destroy and uncreate it all. Right and wrong, good and bad, bottom pock, all nine, shorts, boys and beyond. You have got to understand that there is no such thing as need. Need is a created con con construct of this reality. There are many constructs in this reality that are not real. We create them in order to justify the choices we make or to prove they were right. A finite being uses need to justify what they are not willing to choose. If you have the point of view that there is any need in your life you are creating a reality that doesn't actually exist and well, actually this is like i'm just gonna stop you because mm -hmm. this um the point of view that you need anything in your life is something that i really um got like really got only recently like the energy of need is stopping us in just so many ways so um will you question? just be willing to look at where in your life you are still functioning from need. And you can also ask the question that Bowman's gave us in the last uh, class mm. we were attending. It's like, how can I be needless of, and then you put everything on the... Yes. Uh, this and this and this and this. How can I be needless of my business? How can I be needless of money? How can I be needless of my partner? How can I be needless of my friends? Because when you are being needless, this is the most attractive energy on yes. the planet Earth. And just like, just perceive how it is when you have someone, for example, um, and who you are needs needed. you. Yeah. Who or, needs yeah. you. Or when, Anna, I need you. It's like that energetically, I am like, <laughs> yeah, she will go away. I will go like barriers up totally. Like the energy of need is um, is like really um, pushy and it really is an invalidation of your knowing and your whole being. And also one more question, like what do you love ab about being needed? It's mm -hmm. like, like how much are you proving your being with that? Like... Uh, how much are you not willing to be like um like i just acknowledge that sometimes like where i was like making myself needed so i i proved to me that i have some value or something yes. and how much at the same time was this stacking me at places i couldn't go further and couldn't create more or like like it's yeah. really so everything that is everything that brought up everything that you are not understanding and judging yourself because of that so everything that is times a gazillion just let destroy and uncreate yeah. this is really huge in parenting mm -hmm. like how much are we creating ourselves as mothers and fathers from this energy of needing to be needed mm -hmm. and everything that is that's, that's good, yes yeah. <laughs> right and wrong good and bad pod and pop all nine shorts boys and beyond and now after the clearing statement you can perceive the shift in the energy every time yes. we say it it's like the energy that came up like just shifted and changed wow yeah so cool okay maybe we would just read like yeah like this page um till the end and then we can if you have any questions like about anything that is coming up for you right now you can just uh, write them in the chat um and or you can just um like turn your microphone off on and ask loud so like let's just finish this page because we have only 10 minutes <laughs> left so okay i will just read this again you have no i won't when somebody dies we think we need to be unhappy this is another construct. What if it's someone who has been in pain for a year or two? It's hard to be sorry for a person who finally dies after a year of pain. <laughs> then relief for them and their body is 
extraordinary. Shouldn't you be happy? They are no longer in pain. <laughs> it's I am this laughing. Is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because I explained that I won't read this again. Like it's like okay. Um, yeah. No, it's like Gary sometimes will make some examples that will make us like react or feel really yeah. uncomfortable. Um, but how often do we talk about something like this? Um, and when we talk Never, about something actually. like no. this, we have, we have the opportunity to actually look at it from all different points of view and to actually be present with the energy that comes up and just maybe ask a couple of questions regarding that. So you will get that a lot in this book, like things that will like really make you like, uh, what is he saying? Yeah, they will um, always always pick an example that would really poke you yes. somewhere. So we will really get your energy of whatever it comes up, like resistance or something. So that's why this example is also here. Like really think of that. How many times when somebody died in your life or like whenever you just need to be unhappy, to be sad? Like were you actually ask some questions about that or like ask yourself like uh, what would you choose right now or were you trying to be right from this reality because if you would be just happy everyone else will judge you yes i've seen it so many times Me with too. people and now actually with people um choosing to be more conscious about everything i've also seen the other part like when someone died there was just just this energy of gratitude and and, um, and also connection like still connection mm -hmm. yeah does somebody want to say something do you have a question how do you allow yourself being needless of everything this is like a question this is the ask you know you ask uh, like how can I be needless of my business today it's the like universal question you ask this and then you become that energy yes. of needless it's like and then you can say like for example what i am saying every morning how can i be needless of my business today everything that doesn't allow me to be that i will destroy and uncreate times a gazillion right and wrong good, good and bad pot and pock all nine shorts best and beyond. i would like to feel that you actually feeling it's a limited perspective yeah. like what if you don't have to limit yourself on feelings but you just like aware of that and be that and know that and it's like there is no definition how you sh how that should feel. It's like it's different for everyone and every moment it could be different. Like yeah. it, just by asking this question, uh, you will start discovering what this is for you and like what we, what this question can change for you. It's like a simple question. It's only a question and it's it works. And also like um, for me. I think the first step is actually being present with this energy of need because functioning from need is an autopilot for all of us in this reality. So just start observing um, or, or like trying to catch yourself where, where and when you are still functioning from the need. And for me, it was like, like really huge because it was all the time, like omnipresent in all areas of my life. Um, like even yes with money with relationships with business with body with like food and anything so just start and there is like, maybe being present with the energy of need and start observing it what it is and then like nadia said asking questions like okay uh what would it take for me to to change this or um how can i how can i be needless, be needless. of everything yes yeah. Just ask that question because when we ask questions, as I explained in the beginning, like the question immediately put at put us into the energy of that. It's like yes. when I ask, like, what is my like financial reality? Immediately, I become the energy of my financial reality, and things started shifting, and everything started changing, and like I create anything in my way. So these are like universal or how can i say uh, questions you ask and then explore what it's what shows up for you so these are the questions which are the tools of access consciousness you should use to and play with them and explore uh what are they gonna going to create for you and like um really become that them like it's really about the energy you be with these questions um yeah. so yeah and it's a matter of practice yeah it's not it like excess consciousness will not tell you that anything is hard work 
uh, because... but still some of these tools are a matter of practice like hammering a nail or anything else um, the more you play with that the more you become that this is the beauty of it it's yeah. not like the more you play with it the better you get but the more you play with it the more you become that Yes, and like the really cool thing about these questions is that like every time you use it, you can perceive the change, you can acknowledge. It's like they work actually immediately if you are willing to see that and be aware of that. And it's like it's super easy to use them and it's super fun and it's just like what, why, why don't you just play? Just like not from a space of need or like or order or something, but just like exploring what is possible um, because you have nothing to lose. Yeah. And yeah, really not from this space of seriousness. Like in Rome, um, like me and Nadia invented this really cool tool, <laughs> like really cool, really advanced access tool <laughs> that now really changes and shifts our lives. And it goes like this. I don't know if you could see it. But it's actually, it's actually saying goodbye to all the energies that are just not working for you. And it's funny, but just like being present with that and just like doing this it's as like, a demand to change it. It's like clearing the projections. Yes. Because people all the time project something into what you should, what you are and like what you should be and everything. And you buy into those projections if you are not be willing to be aware of. So with those moves, you just clear all the projections that have been put on you. Like for example, if somebody judges you as like poor person or like having all the time money troubles or like you will have them if you want to be willing to be aware of them and change them and choose something else and be you in creating everything so it's like and like like the example from Rome was when I was feeling like super happy like I was the most happy person in the world and then one lady came to me and she asked me oh Nadia are you all right? Are you feeling good? And like for three minutes, I buy into her projections and I start doubting myself. Oh, oh, I don't, uh, I shouldn't feel that happy. Like something no. must have been. An infinite uh, being wouldn't choose to be happy at all. Yeah. So, and then I just remember to this magical tool and I just do like that. Okay. Bye bye. All the projections so that she has put it on me and I can be myself again. And it's like, really like there is a lot of, projections all the time uh to us like what we like about everything we are not even aware of we don't even have awards for all the projections yeah but how like, many needs have been projected to you yeah like how, what you should need yes <laughs> like mm -hmm. yes what mm -hmm. you should need as i don't know yeah as someone having a body like you should eat yeah or you should exercise or you should have money or you should i don't know have children or whatever mm -hmm. So, so all the needs that have been projected to you, let's just, just clean them. Wave goodbye. <laughs> yeah. And like every time, like even now we are speaking publicly, like, like, Every each one of you um, projects something at us, and it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, or like if it's like a positive point of view or a negative point of view. There is a lot of projections. Like you are not do doing this, this maybe on purpose, but there still are. So like it's really amazing that we have the, this tool, so we can <laughs> clear everything that is and will be projected at us in the future. And you can, we are ex like sharing that with you because you can use that tool also. And and see how it works for you and it's really funny because we it's said, our gift yeah it's our gift <laughs> so the world will be yeah. uh, less projected or like there will be less projections in this world for all of us we are here together and we are here for possibilities so what really can we change and create in this world if we all start choosing and functioning from consciousness yeah, so. and, and also what, what really brings a lot of change to my world or what, what started is to when I started to really have fun with that, when I, start, when I started to play with that, when I stopped doing like the serious personal growth thing, you know, and, um, and the more fun I have and it's, it's really a demand that I made of my, like for my life. Um, so how can the two of us be an, an invitation for you, like for all the tools that we're going to read and learn, um, just to play with them. I just... think we are doing great. Yeah. Are we like, I mean, um, it's like really what the combination of two of us can 
contribute to you, to your life, to this world? What can we bring to all of the seekers that are seeking what we have to offer? And really, if you would like to spend, spend more time with us and the consciousness and uh, like acknowledge all the tools, like you are really invited to join us for the series of this exploration of 10 keys to total freedom you can register on my website or even uh, on facebook we will also send you an email with the, the recording of this zoom and there will also be a registration link so you can join us for 88 euros for 10 hours exploring going through this book and like um, delivering everything we know about that to you and also engaging with you you can be a part of this you can share with us what do you know and like let's explore this together and let's change our lives world bodies everything that is willing to change yeah what can we change in 10 short zoom meetings it's really not the change it, it's not out there somewhere in the future the change is now mm -hmm. like now now yeah what if you have like uh, 48 hours to change everything you you would like to change or not even 48 what if you can acknowledge that you already changed something because you are because because you're willing to look at something different you have been present in this zoom for an hour right now you are definitely different for like a, like you are really different that's like other people who are drinking beer right now somewhere else or like are not even interested in consciousness but you have like the whole your life you have known that there is something else post possible that there is like that there there has to be something different that you are exploring this and like acknowledge that in yourself please the gift you be and like the gift yeah, of exactly. like dissatisfied dreamer you are because this is a gift of being aware of better possibilities and please acknowledge the difference you are and start using it and show this world what is actually possible by becoming that and like access consciousness for me is the easiest the funniest the quickest way and like it helps me to get more conscious and it works for me but it's not the only way and access consciousness doesn't exclude anything and there are really simple tools that tools that everyone can use and we are here to invite you to use them more to become them more and to start having fun in your life and create like like what if we can go bigger like what if you have to start asking like hundred times more for what you are asking like currently or like it's like we just created a class a foundation in hawaii and it it's super exciting for us and our lives are changing because of that big and time. It's like, like like it's big time and at the same time it's super easy so joyful so light everything gets created and like we already have registrations for this class like more registrations than for my foundation class in slovenia so it's like what if we go bigger it's actually easier for us and what else is and possible yeah, yeah <laughs> we have registrations of people and also 60 dolphins yeah 60 <laughs> dolphins yeah <laughs> how cool is that yeah so we are just yeah. really grateful that you yes, were here that's that what i wanted here. to say like it's really not just about like really not about the zooms or, or the two of the two of us but really all of us here have the capacities to choose greater and stop functioning in our lives from surviving um and start thriving yes yeah, start thriving and just start creating a, a totally different future and the ones who are choosing like this class or any other classes um are the ones who have the capacities to actually get more awareness and to actually choose something different so thank you for choosing more Thank you. And yeah, thank you, Alinka. How does it get any better than this? And thank you, Tadea, yes. who is inviting Tadea, all the yes. dolphins. Let's have yeah. some fun. Not, not some. Like, how can we have so much fun? It's just going to be That outrageous. we forget to judge ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We are so grateful. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your thank time. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you. And use that question with an infinite being. Truly choose this and let us know what is going yes. on for you. And join us on for more, join us in this Zoom series. So, see you. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.